Hi guys, Bill again. Right, this is firmly into good fella territory. Right, mate. Check this out. You can pause the vid and I death for. You can click on the link below. Got it? Cool. Right, I'm always wittering on about the feminist press. Now, I don't mean that there's some twice monthly cabal where all the journals get together to plot some kind of dastardly misandry. What I mean is that to write the way they write, they have to see the world from a feminist perspective. So, patriarchy, whether they acknowledge it or not, is taken as a given. So is privilege, so is male disposability. Hypergamy is a worthy goal, and failing that, well, who needs a man anyway? Now this article is a staple in this kind of rag. And that's just one of the British ones. There's a few. I'm quite sure you've got the same wherever you stay in the world. Now this story's uh, <laughs> it's run every week. My man left me for another woman. The bastard. First thing to notice is that the man is generally seen as property. My man stolen by another woman. And the next thing to note is that he's got value. You know, he's described in terms acceptable to the target audience. Knight in shining armour, too soft to put his foot down, helps a heroine to cope with her obesity, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Just an aside ladies, my ancestors were Vikings. They were pretty much indistinguishable from the Normans, you know, the real knights in shining armour. They were noted for having a fondness for rape, murder and slave ownership. Now you might want to reconsider what your definition of what constitutes a good man is. Just saying. Anyway, Hubby finally puts his foot down when she reaches 27 stone. <laughs> That's about £378. Now she characterises his response as being a reaction to a lack of sex. See, it's another constant theme that you see in these rags. You know, men want women for sex. She's already confessed he's been telling her to go easy on the donuts for an age, but Apparently it's lack of nookie that drives him over the edge. <sighs> really? Her reaction to him is quite telling. He weighed 21 stones himself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's head and shoulders taller than her. He's knocking his pan in every night as a driver. He's still 84 pounds, lighter than her. But now he's the fatty. Anyway, she bullies him into joining the slimming club where <laughs> Oh, karma's a bitch. Surprise, surprise. He meets a lassie who's a wee bit less judgmental and probably a bit less obsessed with her weight. And she wonders why he said not to keep on banging on about her weight even as she was losing it. The rest of the article's just packing, really. There's a few sleek ad homes on Hobby's new woman and she makes a play for sympathy about her having a hysterectomy towards the end of the marriage. Um, he wasn't very supportive around about then, which is unfortunate. But anyway, it all ends well. By the end of the piece, she's trimmed down, and she can't for the life of herself understand why her man's run off with some porker from the saloon club. <laughs> ah dear. Shall I tell her where she's going wrong, fellas? First of all, he doesn't mind big women. His concern about her weight was just that concern. He didn't want a size zero trophy, but he didn't want her turning into the blob either, and that's as much for her sake as his. The next thing to note is that you can't starve somebody of affection indefinitely and expect to get away with it, especially if they understand precisely why you're starving them of affection. It wasn't a lack of sex, it was a dysfunctional relationship that he was reacting to. Now she went straight to sex, but she doesn't think about all the things that surround it. There's an easy intimacy between lovers. You know, those little touches, the private jokes, the secret looks. Yeah, you know, just the wee kiss on the shoulder or the neck as you're going out for work. Yeah, how much of that was missing from his life? How much of that was missing from her life? <laughs> she dragged him off to the slimming club. I guarantee you he did not want to do that. See here's the thing, 
men know how to get into shape. There's no mystery to us, no talk of genetics or diets that work. We don't have those magazines as our guide. <sighs> when we want to get fit, we move more and we eat less. It takes discipline, it takes effort, and for most of us it's far too much investment for far too little return. If we can accomplish the physical tasks that we want to in our daily lives, then we're quite happy staying exactly the way we are. I'll give you an example. See, right now, I can spend, I don't know, an hour-ish training every few days. And I can bang in a mile and a half in about 15 minutes. I can bench my own body weight. I can curl 20 kilo dumbbells for you all day long. Now, that's, that's all right for a guy in his mid-40s, like. But to get back to service fitness standards, to be able to be in the armed services again, I'd have to opt that ante to at least a couple of hours, most days. I'd have to cut two to 500 calories off my daily intake. <sighs> Fuck that. I mean, what's wrong with look like Bob Hoskins anyway? He's a movie star too. Poor hobby was taxi driver shaped. That's what he did. The last thing in his mind was trying to take on George Clooney in the fashion stakes. Slimming was a real chore to him, and having her banging on about it constantly just reminded him of how much bollocks he was going through just to please her. Men aren't dogs, ladies. We don't like performing tricks. Have a look at the pictures in that article. See how similar the two women look. See, she was exactly what he wanted in a woman, but she failed completely to maintain her part of their partnership. While he was being a knight in shining armour, even doing up her shoelaces for her when she got too fat to do it herself, she was putting her efforts into comforting and rebuffing his romantic, his romantic efforts. She's taking no responsibility for letting herself go. She doesn't take any responsibility for projecting her guilt onto him and forcing him to join the slimming club where she met a nemesis. And she doesn't take any responsibility for failing. I don't think she even noticed that she failed to make any real effort to win him back. I mean, quite the contrary. She's pointing to a new body shape. She's announcing to the whole wide world about how much more worthy that makes her over her rival. And she assumes that Hubby must want to be some kind of lapdog for putting up with his new femme. <sighs> Here's a news flash, ladies. Forget the trashy magazines. If you want to partner with a man, start by taking a long, hard look at how you think of us. We're human beings, we're not human doings. We're not property. Now, we are patient, but it's got limits. And just because we don't run off in a flood of tears when you say something hurtful, it doesn't mean that we can't be hurt. Yeah, we've got thoughts, we've got feelings, we've got rights too. Men's rights, they're human rights, you know. <laughs> Alright, I take the piss a lot. It's how I deal with things. But there's a link in the low bar to a young man who isn't amused at all by how most women treat half the population. Now, it's quite painful to watch. But I'd recommend doing it, especially if you're young and female. The guys that you divide up into hot, creepy and douche are three and a half billion individuals. You'd hate to be pigeonholed and you get thoroughly pissed off yourself if you weren't treated as your own person. It might be worth imagining that men might like some of the same treatment too. Anyway, layers.